Welcome back, friends. Mark Piotr here. You know, today I'm going to talk about a subject that has been near and dear to my heart for many, many years, and that is the baffle inside of the mouthpiece. So you might be asking, why is the baffle important? What it does is it shoots the air faster into the mouthpiece and it gives you that bright, sizzly tone that I personally was looking for. Now, if you prefer a dark sound, you're not going to want a baffle in your mouthpiece. But if you want that high, sizzly, bright tone, uh, like I grew up in the 80s loving that sound, then this might be for you. So yes, this video is about how to install a baffle into your mouthpiece that doesn't currently have one. Now, this is an example of a standard, uh, it's a Meyer mouthpiece, but it's got a standard chamber, which means there is really almost no baffle to it. This is the Jody Jazz Jet, and you can see a severe difference, I hope you can see this. Uh, there is a very high edge right there for about the first half inch, I would say. So what this does is it compresses the air at the beginning of its travel and makes it shoot fa at a faster speed into the chamber, okay, thereby giving you that higher uh, tone. It also uh, increases the ease for you to get your altissimo notes. And that's one of the main things that I'm searching for is Easy Altissimo. This is another example of a, a high baffle. This is the Jody Jazz Super Jet. The baffle doesn't look as high as the Super Jet we just saw, but it's a longer travel before it starts to open up into the chamber. So this has an altogether different tone. And this is the mouthpiece that we're going to be working on. This is the Yanagasawa 7 metal for alto sax. And hopefully you can see that it doesn't have very much of a baffle at all. Now, you can see that it's already been done because of the glue and the crud down here. This, I've already modified this before. In fact, I've modified several of my mouthpieces to insert a baffle. And that's why I'm making this video, is to show you how to do it. Last year, I posted a video on my YouTube channel to compare several different mouthpieces on the alto sax. So right now, I'm going to play uh, two reads without the baffle installed yet, just so you can hear the contrast. So I've got my Boston Sax Shop cane read on here right now on the alto sax. <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to try a couple of altissimo notes because that's part of the reason why I want the baffle. This one is the Laguerre American Cut 2.25. <laughs> And then a 
up high altissimo. Well, I guess there is a step that I'm not going to be showing you because this is the piece um, already cut and almost ready to go. But you're probably wondering, where did he get this from? What is that? Okay, this came from a compact disc jewel case. Um, and there's already a little bevel down here on this edge which kind of makes a nice convenient scoop when you're going to have your your baffle. And what I did was I just literally took a a saw, a hacksaw, and I in both sides of these and then I cut out a piece of this tray um, roughly a half inch across and maybe five eighths to three quarters of an inch long. Okay. And then from there, I just file it down and sand it down. Then I'm going to add on a little piece of two-sided mounting tape. And there it is, a little tiny piece of that right here. Most of this work has already been done before I made this video. Now I'm going to take the baffle and see how it fits. It's just kind of a test run, okay? It's the right width. I learned from experience that you can't have this baffle all the way up to the front edge. Uh, that might be obvious to you, but <laughs> at first I tried it. What happens is there, there's no air that can get inside because the reed is closing right onto the baffle. So it has to be back a little bit to allow a flow of air. I'm just eyeballing it right now and I see that the height is too high. There's not going to be enough air flowing over the top of this baffle before it gets into the chamber. So that's why I have these files. Drag it back and forth, gently at first, and we're going to take off some material because the whole thing is too thick. Feel it kind of cutting in there now. So at this point you might be wondering, well how does he know when he's done? And this is a good clue. I take a look at somebody else's design and I see how much baffle there is below the rail and kind of imitate that. So the next question you're probably wondering is, well wait a minute, if you're just imitating somebody else's design, why don't you just buy that one and play that one? That's a good question. But there are so many other factors with your mouthpiece. Um, one of the big factors for me is this curve right here on the rails. The way that it curves away from the reed uh, is really critical to me because that determines how much of a bite I need to use to get the sound and, and the um, altissimo that I want. And I happen to prefer this mouthpiece's curve over this mouthpiece's curve. Even with the naked eye, I can tell that this one, the curve is longer and more gradual. This one is a little shorter, so it's more abrupt. I also might point out that this mouthpiece, like many mouthpieces, as this um, slope goes down, the throat goes down into the chamber, there is a tiny hint of a scoop in that direction underneath it. And so I have to accommodate a little bit of a scoop or contour in my baffle so that I don't get any leaks of air you know, escaping through the middle. I'm going to give this one a try. It, like I said, it's all guessing. So now comes the exciting part, <laughs> the glue. And I do want to 
say that it's a little bit scary because you feel like if you don't get it right, you have to uh, you have to start over. But the good news is this is not permanent. Okay, it's just super glue gel. And I'm just putting a little bit bead up here to kind of fill in those gaps. I'm putting a little bit on the back here. I'll put a little bit in the middle, although I'm not really sure if the middle is actually going to touch. And that's it. And now comes the tricky part, laying it inside exactly where you want it. to get any glue on the rails of your mouthpiece because that just there's just more to clean up later on yeah that looks about right to me and so now the only thing left to do is to wait for it to dry and try it out Already I notice an increase of brightness, a little bit of that zzzz, which is what I'm hoping for, a little bit of that sizzle. Um, and I can bend the note well, which is a good sign. That means the air is flowing and the reed is bending well. Now it, it might be louder, maybe I'm just excited about it because I like this sizzly tone. <laughs> So hopefully you hear a lot more brightness as I do. I hope this camera mic is picking up the change in the tone. And um, yeah, I like this a lot more than I did without the baffle. <laughs> So now let's uh, try out the uh, Legier American Cut 2.25. <laughs> wow. It, at first impulse, it's even louder than the cane reed was, which was, in my opinion, louder than without a baffle. There's just more power. <laughs> Was some fun for you and I'm not telling you to go out and do it today because there should be some consideration uh, before you try to alter your mouthpiece. Uh, the main consideration of course is the possibility of getting the glue on there and then having to remove it, um, discoloration, uh, some possible scratches on the mouthpiece, mostly on the inside of course. But overall I personally have had mostly good experiences installing my own baffles into my mouthpieces. So you take care and we'll see you next time. <laughs>